And he said, uh, let's take a walk. He said, I want to uh, talk to you. He was a member of uh, Douglas MacArthur's security guard. And he told me that Douglas, General Douglas MacArthur was very familiar with the Roswell incident, that he himself had seen the material plus the bodies that were taken from Roswell. That's what he told me. And of course, he was passing through on a TDY to the States from Japan. And he just said, if you ever say anything to me, anybody that I told you, so I would just deny it. My name is Leonard Pretko. I'm from Waldwick, New Jersey. Uh, entered the military in uh, August 23rd, 1949, in Jersey City. I went into the military with my twin brother. And I had gone to Lackland Air Force Base for my training, uh, Cam Gorn, Georgia, for uh, communications training, and then sent to Hickam Field, Hawaii, arrived there on May 4th, 1950, left there May 4th, 1953. Well, at that time, actually, it was later on they became a staff, I was a buck sergeant, and I was working in the communications. Uh, it was weather relay. And um, Hickam Field had two theaters. One was in, in a closed theater, brand new, and then they had an outdoor theater at the end of Hickam Field by the entrance of Pearl Harbor. And it was situated on a mound because it had to go down. You know, they had a band show. And it was one night we were watching a movie. There was about 250 people there. And it was, of course, in Hawaii, the only time it rains in the summertime is in the mountains. So it was a clear night with the moon over our left shoulder. I was in like in the middle of the, of the audience on the right-hand side, and somebody, yelled, somebody turned around and said, what in the hell is that? And everybody turned over and looked over to the right, and over to the entrance of Pearl Harbor, there was nine silver discs. And the first signing that they had was, it was like a letter L. And before you know it, they were going this way and that way, and they were making all, we watched them for about 10 minutes. Everybody just kept looking. And <laughs> we had some colonel get up, and he said, uh, don't worry about it, folks. He said, that's all spotlights. Well, being an idiot like me, I jump and I said, colonel, I said, what do you mean spotlights? There's no clouds. There's no beam of light coming from any place, and you're telling us it's spotlights? And he told me to shut up. And just then, a bird colonel jumps up, and he said, I knew the bird colonel, because that's why I knew he was the bird colonel. His name was uh, Miller. He jumps up, and he says, Colonel, he said, you shut up. He said, you're not going to fool the people here. They're all military. So we watched those things for about 10 minutes, and then they just took off. So we walked up there. As we were crossing the parade field, which is right next to Holly McKay Backs, Four of us were walking there, and all of a sudden, somebody said, what in the hell is that? So we looked over towards Diamond Head, and these two lights we saw in the distance, in the horizon, and all of a sudden, they were done from one end to the other end, just like that over the top of our heads, nothing. No sound, no nothing. And that was it. And we knew that the, the fastest thing we ever had at that time was a flying wing, because we saw them fly in Hickam. And there was trailed by a couple of, uh, I think it was P-38s or P-47s at that time, and they couldn't even catch them. I think it was about 535 or 550 miles an hour at the top speed. So these things were, they were really bad. And there were times that we read in the Honolulu newspaper that they had tracked these objects once before from Hawaii to Japan in eight minutes. I was barracks chief. And... In the, middle, in, in the Air Force, we were not allowed to carry weapons. And some guy, this gentleman walks in, little buck sergeant with army uniform on and a 45 strapped to his side. And I asked him, I said, I asked him what he was doing there. And he said to me, well, I'm going to be billeted here for a couple of weeks. I'm on T.D. White to the States. I said, well, not that 45, you're not. He said, well, I'm authorized, so we, they call the CQ, and the guy comes up, he comes up and he says to me, he says, Sergeant, he says, it's okay for him to carry the 45, he's authorized. He's a member of uh, General Douglas McCarthy's security guard. I said, fine, but he's gonna, he's gonna lock it away in a locker, and he's gonna double lock the locker. Fine, we did that. Well, while he was there, we became very friendly. And it happened, the thing is that it happened, I happened to mention him about the incidents about the 
two uh, lights that we saw going over in a parade field. And then we, we t I talked to him about the UFOs that we saw, these nine discs. And he said, look, I can't talk to you here. He said, well, let's take a walk. Let's go out across the street to the parade field where there's nobody around. So we went out there. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, but if you say that I told you, I'll swear I never even mentioned it to you. I said, no problem. And he said to me, you know I'm a member of General Douglas MacArthur's security guard. He says, I'm on my way to the States for TDY. He said, I'm going to tell you something. General Douglas MacArthur was very familiar with the Roswell incident, the ma crash material, and also the bodies, because he himself has seen them. Is what he told me. The reason I feel that they did this, and you know, once you lie, <laughs> it's very hard to get out of it. There was two reasons. One, you have, we just came out of a war, a bad war. Two, well, that actually was three reasons. Two, we were, we were in competition with Russia. But the, I think the main reason was that the 1939 Halloween deal with the War of the Worlds, the invasion from Mars. You know, when this thing, when these, this Roswell incident happened, the East Coast was never notified. The East Coast was never notified because when they had the War of the Worlds, remember that they were supposed to have landed in New Jersey? They panic. People panic. And I lived, in, I lived in Pennsylvania at the time outside of Scranton, and I was only a kid. But I'll never forget the news of people panicked and people running wild in the streets in Newark and so on. People were actually really going out with guns and shooting at cows. In the, in, in, at that time, remember, it isn't like today. You had a lot of farm area down there. Remember, I got out in 1955. I came back to Andrews in 1953. So it's in that time frame. I knew the C-47 pilot. He flew me up to uh, Hilo the day that uh, Kilauea erupted after 50 years of being dormant. And they themselves told me that they themselves had had sightings of strange craft. But being military personnel, they were not allowed to discuss it. Yeah, it was a team based out of Andrews. And uh, they, they uh, said to me, uh, you know, if we go out and we mention something, you thought, they're going to hang our ass. And they, and they asked me what I knew. And I told them about Hakem Field. And I told them, you know, about the friend again. And I said, but, I said, you know, I'm a staff sergeant. And I, I said, I'm probably sticking my foot up my rear end if I keep talking about this stuff. And I'll tell you something. In the military, they do ridicule you. Because I was ridiculed a few times. Uh, I was told I would never make master sergeant. I, I, I was on orders for tech. But I was told I would never make master sergeant if I brought this crap up again. And Lenny said, if you keep this crap up, he says, you'll never make master sergeant. He said, I know you're on orders for tech, but you'll never make master sergeant. He said, they'll force you out of the military. We came down from Washington through channels, and we were told that we were all wrong, that it was just a weather balloon. And that was uh, the only thing that I think we heard was, well, that's the end of that story shouldn't have printed all that to start with and you know this type of thing.